Clemson fans, we are back at it with another edition of the Clemson Sports Show and probably our biggest preview episode of the season. We've got Wake Forest against Clemson. Wake Forest, one of the top teams in the nation against Clemson, which, I mean, Matt, you could possibly argue that had Clemson not made a few mistakes in a couple of those games, they could easily be in the playoff contention right now. I know that's really weird to say with all the injuries that they've had, but it, it, it really is that close how narrow these wins and losses have been for Clemson this season. But before we get into this preview, uh, Matt, Matt Connolly, our excellent team reporter, not only football, but basketball reporter at ClemsonSports.com. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, well, man. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, you know, I, I think people kind of from the outside view this season is just a complete disaster for Clemson. Uh, but it really hasn't been. I mean, it's a seven and three team. Yeah. Uh, has a chance to go six and two in the league and still win 10 games. So definitely not the season people expected, but Clemson's still putting together a really solid season. Obviously, um, it's, it's mostly because of the defense. But look, it, it, it'd probably be viewed a little different if the defense was struggling, if Clemson was winning games 45 to 40 or, you know, yeah. 52 to, to 38 or whatever it may be. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think one side of the ball for Clemson is still elite. The other one's obviously – struggled mightily for most of the year, uh, but still a, bit, a very solid season for Clemson. Look, here's the thing. As football fans, we'd love to see great offense. I, I don't think there's any football fan who wouldn't want to see, you know, expl explosive offenses going up against one another. You know, you have your your hardcore diehard fans who would love to see some good defense being played. But when you see the offense struggling, you kind of associate that as the whole team struggling because, you know, the games can get kind of ugly. They can tend to be closer than uh, than you would expect them to be for a program of Clemson's caliber. But guess what, Matt? Georgia has been putting up big numbers on offense this season, has beat every single opponent by at least 17 points, except for Clemson. I mean, yeah, that, and, and they scored three that game on offense. Oh. Three, they thank you. They you know, the other the game. other was the pick six. So, yeah, I'm with you for sure. And you can argue another game in which Clemson had a pick six that could have determined the result of the game was the Pittsburgh Clemson game. You know, you just can't give, um, you know, offenses, you know, opposing offenses that are kind of struggling compared to what they normally do any free points. And that's what Clemson has done in those two games. And then the NC state game was a tough one, you know, looking back on it, NC state is, you know, a, a top 25 team Clemson went in there, lost in double overtime on the road, a pretty tough environment. You and I were both there. So you know, as much as we have criticized Clemson this season, they're in a position to still win the ACC, and that all starts on Saturday against Wake Forest. Matt, what are your thoughts going into this game, man? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I mean, man, this, this Wake Forest offense, you know, I know Brent Venable said this week that it's a lot pretty similar to, to the last few years. You know, he's like, oh, if y'all not been watching, they've been really good. Um, but I do think that this offense is on another level from some of the ones that we've seen in the past years. And especially ones that have come to Clemson. I mean, a couple of years ago, I remember Wake Forest came in. I think they were down their top three receivers. Uh, they were just running the ball in the middle most of the game to seem really content to just get out of town and, and try to protect guys and not get guys more banged up. Four years ago when they came into Clemson, um, they were actually playing a receiver. Kendall Hinton was playing quarterback just because they were so banged up that game as well. So I'm excited to see what should be a, a mostly healthy Wake Forest team and Wake Forest offense against uh, this Brent Venables defense that has just been outstanding since he's uh, arrived at Clemson. I think it just, you know, it's a strength on strength game. Wake Forest strength is his offense. Clemson strength is his defense. Let's line it up, spot the ball, as they say. Let, let's see what happens. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it plays out. Now, we'll get to this later in the episode, um, you know, talking about my recruiting trip out to California. But, you know, I was gone the whole week. I was up in Virginia, went to California back here in Virginia recording this episode. So I didn't get to go to the press conferences and kind of get the vibe around the team uh, right now, you know, around head coach Dabo Sweeney, offensive coordinator Tony Elliott, the players. Matt, you were there. You know, what, what did you think about how they're feeling going into this game? Yeah, D Dabo described Clemson as a wounded dog on the side of the road, just looking for someone to to pick them up and help them and, and maybe still have a chance to win the Atlantic. Um, but, you know, I, I think defensively, I think the guys are just fired up to – you know, really face an elite offense. I mean, Wake Forest has scored at least 35 points on every team this season. They put up 45 last week against NC State, and that's a you know an NC State defense that has been pretty good, as Clemson fans know. Um, so, I mean, I think defensively they're just looking at it as a huge opportunity to show what they can do against an elite offense. 
Obviously, senior day, they've won 33 straight games at home. Uh, the senior class, not the six-year seniors, but the the fourth-year and fifth-year guys have a chance to finish off their careers undefeated at home. So just a huge opportunity, um, you know, all the way around for, for a lot of these guys. Man, it's not going to be easy, um, but I, I think they're excited. You know, offensively, I, I think it's just trying to get guys healthy, try to find some pieces to go in there and make plays, some young guys you're going to be counting on and just trying to do enough offensively to where, first of all, not you don't hurt the defense. You know, you don't give up points. You don't turn over the ball. You don't have a pick six or anything like that. Um, and then the second of all, trying to do just enough and make enough plays in the running game and the passing game to, to give the defense a chance to do what it does. Now, I would also contend that in order to not hurt the defense, you have to keep the defense off of the field. And the way that you do that is you run the ball. Wake Forest, and you brought this up before, you know, I'm going to mention it in my bold predictions piece. Wake Forest is allowing over 200 rushing yards per game. Clemson needs to take advantage of that, absolutely. That, that, that is the area of the game, in my opinion, where Clemson, in most of the games this season, they haven't been able to win the time of possession battle. They need to do that on Saturday. If they don't win the time of possession battle, if they don't rush for over 200 yards, in my opinion, I don't, I don't think they're going to be able to win this game. You're, you're already decimated at wide receiver. You know, the tight end, we've, we've talked about the lack of involvement throughout the course of the season on a consistent basis uh, in, in the passing attack. You're going to have to get those, those running backs involved there early and often. And I'm, I'm aiming for 250 yards. I think that's the number that they need to get to on, on the ground. Yeah, and I agree with you that the, the running game is going to be huge. One thing I'm really interested to see, you know, going back and watching the UConn game, DJ Uyunglele was not mobile at all. He could not run at all. He tried to roll out. He could barely roll out before he was getting getting hit and guys were running up and getting him. He was just completely um, immobile back there. And so, you know, there was no threat with him at all, keeping it on his own read. You know, when he's handing off to Phil Moffa, everyone's going to Phil Moffa because no one's worried about him keeping on the zone read and, and running. So I'm interested to see if he can keep this week against Wake Forest. Um, you know, I think that's going to be a huge part of the game. And then also if Tyson Pumachan can go with the shoulder that's been banged up. I mean, they, they said he's getting better. It will probably be a game time decision. Still, still waiting to see if he's able to go or not. Um, but, you know, if he can't go, I think that's a big loss. Not, not that, He's going to go in and play the whole game or anything like that. But just to have him in the running game, I think he really brings a spark. He did it against UConn. I think he would do it against Wake Forest as well. So that's two things I'm watching just to see how healthy DJ Uyunglele is and if, if Tyson Pumaton is able to go or not. Now, one of my bold predictions that I was going to put out there was going to be that Tyson, Tyson would get more snaps than DJ and would finish the game as the, you know, quote unquote, starting QB for Clemson. Look, we, we talked about it before. And we're not going to, you know, go over the point and uh, talk about it way too much longer. But DJ has struggled this season passing. That was the advantage, the clear advantage he had over Tyson. Wake Forest now struggles against, you know, we, we know they struggle against uh, stopping the run. If you have Tyson Pumachon in, you know, with that zone read, being able to work with the running backs, that, that can present some big problems for Wake Forest's defense. And all he has to do, all he has to do is make, a couple of throws, a few throws like he did to the Kari Collins against UConn. That was a beautiful pass. It keeps the defense on their toes. I think Tyson would be the quarterback best suited for this particular game. Am I saying that Tyson should be the starter the rest of the season? Absolutely not. But I think in this game right here where you need to control, uh, control the ball, control time of possession, Tyson has to be the way to go. Yeah, and I don't disagree. Um... I do think there's a pretty big drop off, even with DJ struggles and, the, and just their passing ability and kind of what you can do in the playbook. But I agree with you. I mean, if, if DJ is not a threat to run, then it's a huge it's a huge factor. It's a huge factor in the game. I think we both agree Clemson's best bet to winning this game, particularly when you have Justin Ross, Joseph McGod, and Frank Ladson banged up, uh, Sage Ennis at tight end banged up. I mean, I think the best the best option for Clemson is keeping the ball on the ground, and so you'd rather have a Tyson Pumachon who's already probably a better runner than DJ, who's also healthy um, over, you know, a guy who's honestly playing on one leg at this point, it seems like. Now, I would also throw out to you that one way Clemson needs to, to win this game, one area that they need to win this game in is going to be converting on third downs and just picking up first downs in general. Against UConn, I mean, once again, this UConn is one of the worst teams in the country. They have one of the worst defenses in the country. Clemson was 5 of 22 against them. And Wake Forest has given up 200 opposing first downs this season. 
That's the area of the game that if also if Clemson doesn't win this this area, if they don't convert on third downs, if they're not able to 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 pick up first downs and and keep the drive going, they're, they're not going to win this game because you have to take advantage of Wake Forest's weakness uh, weaknesses on defense in order for uh, them to win that time of possession battle, for them to keep running the ball, keeping that high potent offense off the field. Yeah, and I think there were a few reasons for for those third down numbers. One is not doing a good enough job on first and second down. And, you know, Clemson had a lot of third and longs in that game. Um, and I highlighted in my film review this week, I just there were plays where, you know, screen passes uh, outside where you want a guy, you have a guy one-on-one, as Tony Elliott said this week, that's all you can do is just try to get a guy one-on-one in space and he's got to go make someone miss. Um, and so, you know, they had several opportunities to do that and instead of having – second and three or second and four. Now it's second and nine, second and eight, second and 10. Um, so that was one area I thought that that they uh, that they lacked as far as, you know, being able to produce on third down. And then also just a running game. They got a stuff song on third and short. And I think at, I put that in the film review as well. You could see that there were times when it was wide open if DJ kept it. I mean, he could have walked for, you know, 15 yards. Maybe not walked for 15 yards, but there, there was plenty of room to at least pick up the first down if he would have kept it, but he just didn't feel healthy enough to do it. Um, and they highlighted on the broadcast as well, just him not being a running threat was a huge disadvantage for Clemson in that game. So, yeah, I'm with you. Um, third down is going to be huge, and I think it kind of starts with some stuff we've talked about earlier. Now, are you a little bit concerned about Clemson's pass defense? Because – you, you know, they've only played four games at home. One of those was against Boston College. BC's backup quarterback threw for over 300 yards, you know, just ha- kind of had a field day there. And they're obviously going up against a, a high potent passing attack in Wake Forest with Sam Hartman, A.T. Perry, their leading receiver there, special. You know, are you a little bit concerned about the Tigers secondary this, this weekend? I am, yeah. And, and we'll see. I mean, I think part of my concern is I think Brent Venables is going to be super aggressive try to get to Hartman, load the box, and he's going to leave some guys on an island one-on-one. Um, part of it, too, is, you know, you've got some of these young safeties who haven't seen this offense yet who are having to read a lot on each play. They're having to read – are they going to keep? Are they going to hand off? What's the receiver doing? You know, there, there's just so much that goes into this offense. Um, you know, does Wake Forest have time to do any misdirection or throwback type stuff uh, to kind of add on to that? So, yeah, I am a little concerned. I mean, there have been times this year when we've seen some holes in the secondary. Even UConn early in the game, there were holes. Mm-hmm. They they either missed miss a throw, they dropped the throw, or they didn't block long enough to get the throw off. So they're definitely, um, you know, so we, we've definitely seen as good as Clemson's defense has been this year. There have definitely been times when there have been some holes in the secondary, and we haven't really seen teams take advantage of that yet. Um, but, man, I think Wake Forest has a chance to if Clemson – doesn't really play well. Uh, cornerbacks, I mean, you know, you need Andrew Booth, you need Sheridan Jones, you need Mario Goodrich, you need all those guys to play well. And then the safety suit, Nolan Turner, RJ Mickens, who's been playing really way, well lately, uh, Jalen Phillips, Andrew McCuba, all those guys need to come out, play well. Uh, Tyler Venables, too. Just, just make plays when they're there. Don't try to do too much. Read your keys. Um, and then just win some one-on-one matchups. I mean, I think for sure – A.T. Perry, Jakiri Robinson, those guys are going to test Clemson. And and, uh, I'm actually interested to see with Roberson if he's able to play. I think he was banged up in the first half um, last week against NC State. So if he doesn't go, I think that's – I know we've talked a lot about Clemson's injuries. I think that's one to watch for sure. Just He's one of the better receivers in the ACC. I think he leads Wake in uh, reception. So that would be a big loss if he can't go. Well, what's the one area of this game, in your opinion, where if Clemson doesn't win it, and not only win it, but potentially dominate it, you don't think the Tigers have a shot in this game at all? Like, what's the one area they need to focus on? Yeah, I think it's a line of scrimmage on on both sides. And I'll probably say more so the defensive side, just because I think that the expectations are higher for that side. Yep. Um, but the, if they're not able to get in the backfield regularly and make plays and, and get to Hartman, blow up the running game, I mean, I think they have to shut down the Wake running game. If Wake starts running off four or five yards a carry, six yards a carry, and then they're able to do some play action stuff where you're getting linebackers and safeties coming up. I think it's game over. Uh, so I think it's controlling the line of scrimmage, stopping that slow mesh point, trying to blow that up before it even has a chance to get started. Um, and then offensive line, you know, this isn't a great weight defensive front. Um, it's not a huge weight defensive front. So just controlling the line of scrimmage and giving those guys a chance to make plays in the running game um, and protecting DJ and, and not letting him get even more banged up than he already is. I also think a big point of emphasis for Clemson is going to be to keep the ball. And you talked about this um, yourself in, in a previous response, 
it is to keep the ball and not turn it over to the opposing defense because Wake Forest is one of the better teams in the country when it comes to turnover margin. They've had 20 turnovers that they, 21 turnovers that they've forced, and they've only given the ball away 12 times. Clemson, on the other hand, has only forced 14 t- turnovers, has given the ball away 12 times. So, look, Wake Forest is coming into this game. I, I'm, we're going to get to this point, um, you know, in the next response here. But Wake Forest is coming into this game as the underdog, surprisingly. You know, that they're, they're, they're not viewed as the favorite in this game. Clemson has to make sure they don't give the ball, o- turn the ball over to them and that they're able to potentially force a turnover or two themselves. Um, that's not something that the defense has been highly explosive uh, with in terms of big time matchups. Uh, but in, in my opinion, that's going to be an area to focus on as well. Yeah. And, and Hartman did throw three picks last week against NC state, um, you know, Clemson's defense. I know they haven't forced a ton of turnovers, but they do have guys in the secondary who can go and make plays and, and come up with interceptions. So yeah, that that's definitely huge. If they can stop Hartman, if they can end some drives early with turnovers, um, you know, I know Sheridan Jones had a big game last week, had one turnover, nearly had another. Obviously, Andrew Booth and Mario Goodrich are two of the better corners in the country and, and certainly capable of getting turnovers as well. So definitely something to watch. You're right. Good point. And, Matt, what do you think about Clemson going into this game as the favorite over Wake Forest? Wake Forest, a top-10 team, you know, um, leading the ACC Atlantic at this time. What are your thoughts on Clemson, despite all the struggles this year, all the injuries that they've had, that they're favored – in a top 10 matchup, I mean, in a matchup against a top 10 team? Yeah, I think it's more so just, yeah. I mean, I mean, look, if you watch these two teams play this year, if you knew nothing about either team and just turn on the film and said, all right, I'm going to watch 10 Wake Forest games, I'm going to watch 10 Clemson games, you would for sure think Wake Forest is a better team and it's not close. Yeah. But there are a few things. I mean, Clemson hasn't lost a home game since 2016. That's certainly something that, that's impressive. It's an impressive streak, and it doesn't happen by accident. Clemson's been incredibly good at home. Um, you know, I think the crowd getting into the game is going to be a huge factor. Wake Forest hasn't seen a crowd like Clemson's going to have on Saturday. I think the defense, the line of scrimmage, I think Clemson probably is, is better on both lines of scrimmage, so I think that that plays a factor as well. So there are definitely uh, reasons that, that Clemson's favorite. I don't think it's completely outlandish. At the same time, I uh, you know, it, it's it would be hard for me to to take Clemson to lay four and a half, five points in this game. Um, just just picking the game as an unbiased observer. Do you think if this game was played at Wake Forest, Clemson would still be favored? Honestly, probably, um, and more so because I think like, like I've been up to Wake Forest Clemson games before, and there are probably more Clemson fans there than there are Wake Forest game fans. So it it wouldn't be like a huge home field advantage type of thing for Wake Forest. Um, so I, I think Clemson would either be favored or maybe maybe right around a pick them or so, but I don't think it would be a huge – you know, I think home field advantage they usually say is three points or so. So I, I don't think it would be a huge um, huge swing, I, I think. But, I, man, I could still see Clemson being favored or maybe a pick them. Absolutely. And let's get into the predictions itself. You know, I'm going to go ahead and start off with mine. I've got Clemson winning this one 27-24. Uh, part of the reason may be that I picked them against Louisville and, and that came back to bite me. But also, I, I really do think there's something special about Clemson's team when they're playing at home this season. They, the, the crowd, you know, even though they, they departed a little bit, some fans departed from the FSU game, they tend to really give them that extra boost, that extra energy that they've needed down the stretch of those big games, especially the student section. Got to give a shout out to the student section there. You know, I'm on the sidelines. I hear them. It's you know, really tough to hear at times. They they make it a really difficult environment for um, opposing teams. And I think this is going to be a close game where the crowd could play a factor. I also really like Clemson's defense, and I just think it's going to shock Wake Forest. I don't think they've seen a defense uh, this stout before that um, this season. So I've got Clemson winning 27-24. I think the, the defense is going to put them in a position to maybe get a couple of touchdowns, uh, whether it's, you know, good field position off a turnover or, or um, you know, for, forcing a punt from Wake Forest, you know, when they're inside their own 10-yard line. I just think that Clemson's defense is going to put the offense in favorable positions. And whether it's Uyunga Gale or Pumachan, I think, um, you know, they're, they're going to be able to do just enough to win this matchup. Matt, what about yourself? Oh, I'm going the other way. I, wow. I have Wake Forest winning 27 to 20. <laughs> um, I, I just think that all year Wake Forest has been the better team. And and I know, like we mentioned, all the factors why Clemson is favored, and I get all of that. 
I just don't think with Clemson banged up at quarterback with DJ. Look, if you told me going into this game, DJ's fully healthy, he's not going to wear a knee brace, he's going to be able to run and, and do a lot in the running game. And Tyson Pubaton's fully healthy and there's nothing wrong with his shoulder and there's no concern with playing him and, and both both players are fully healthy, then I would I would uh, probably pick Clemson. But I think the loss of Justin Ross is big. I think that there are just too many young guys you're counting on on offense who haven't been on this stage before, who haven't played in a game this big before um, with so much going on. And you're going against a Wake Forest team with a lot of veterans and seniors who have played in, in some big games and been there, um, you know, and, and been in these matchups before. Not necessarily to this extent, but still, they're got, I mean, last week was a – a big game against NC State. It was a huge game. And, and you know, they, they've got some veteran guys who've played a lot of football before. So I'm, I'm leaning, I'm leaning Wake. Um, I'm not overly confident in him. I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, you know, Clemson's defense controls the line of scrimmage and is able to, to slow Wake down and, and it's just 20 to 17 Clemson win or something like that. But I just think Clemson, Wake Forest is going to make a few more plays on offense and, and uh, win by a touchdown or so. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I can't disagree with anything that you said in, in in that response. Clemson hasn't really given much faith, you know, this season to where they can beat a big time opponent like Wake Forest. Look at every single game that they've lost this season. It's been their three toughest games of the season. So I, I can definitely see where you're coming from. I just, I don't know, I feel like the there's going to be an added boost from not only the crowd but also within that locker room too to send out those seniors like you mentioned those fourth and fifth year seniors out undefeated at home you know in their college career is going to be the last home game for um you know a few noteworthy guys like James Kowski and um you know Bray Braylon Spector as, as well so I, I just think there's going to be some added momentum there's going to be an added fire from Clemson that doesn't necessarily have to do with what we've seen in in the previous uh, 10 games this season. I just think this is going to be a special moment for, for the Tigers. Uh, th there's a lot riding on the line here, and I think that they're going to be able to win. But like, like you mentioned, I wouldn't be surprised um, if the opposing outcome comes out, you know, and Wake Forest wins this game just based on how they played this year. But, yeah, I've got Clemson winning a close one by three points. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. It, it very well could go the other way. Um, I just think right now with what I've seen and with the injuries Clemson's dealing with, I just trust Wake Forest a little bit more. But – Hey, like we said, they haven't seen a defense like this. They haven't seen a crowd like this. And uh, certainly Clemson could, could show up and get the job done. It'd be a huge accomplishment to win. For these guys to, to discontinue this home winning streak, just, you know, with everything that uh, that has happened this year, for them to extend it another year would, would be incredible. And like you mentioned, Bale Inspector, uh, Nolan Turner, James Skowski, obviously some of these guys playing their last game, a uh, really good way for them to go out. Um, Joseph, before we wrap up, let's let's talk a little recruiting. So I know you you went up to Virginia, then flew across the country, went out to LA, saw some some guys out there. Just what were some of your takeaways uh, from your trip? Yes, yeah, so I thought it was really interesting. We have to start off with my time in Virginia because you know I got to go see Andre Green Jr., who we know wound up committing to North Carolina, and I found it very interesting. You mentioned it on the Tiger Send board on ClemsonSports.com. I had spoken with Andre before the interview. You know, there's a little bit of discussion about whether we were going to run it, you know, that night, um, when what time we were actually going to run it. And Andre asked for that Clemson visit recap to be released after uh, he announced his commitment on Wednesday. So I thought that was interesting because normally you wouldn't release a visit recap, you know, after you commit elsewhere. You know, you wouldn't want that to be out there. So I thought that was kind of interesting that, you know, he talked very highly of the visit. I thought the timing of the visit worked well in Clemson's favor. But then we learned, you know, it's kind of may, may have been a smoke screen and that UNC was the school that was emerging there. So, uh, look, it, it's, a, it's a difficult loss for Clemson. There's just there's no way around it. I'm going to get I want to get your thoughts on this, too. There's just no way around it. Now you're behind the eight ball with uh, Antonio Williams, whose recruitment has progressed. He's been taking official visits, you know, uh, took one to Ole Miss. He's going to be uh, visiting Auburn soon. So. I think that's going to be something to pay close attention to is whether they can dip into his recruitment and come out on top there with only, you know, a few weeks left until early signing period, which begins on December 15th. So you put all the eggs in, in one basket for Andre Green, but, you know, what was the cost of that? It may have been costing out on a, a player like Antonio Williams, who is one of the top players in South Carolina, has been performing like that, just putting up 
uh, monster numbers, video game like numbers would be an excellent addition for them, either in the slot or the outside. I, I just think his speed uh, is game breaking, game changing. So, yeah, I, I, I would like to ask you, do you think Clemson made the right decision going all in for Andre Green? Should they have offered Antonio Williams earlier? I mean, you could still pursue both players like that. That, that was an option. Yeah, it's easy to say now that they made the wrong decision. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, if, if they get Andre Green and, and they don't end up offering Antonio, then it wouldn't have been the right decision because clearly they had Andre up higher on their board and, and had offered him and wanted to be loyal to him. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, look, it's – you know, there's a lot of discussion right now about the way Clemson is recruiting. Um, I think, you know, if you're a player who gets an offer from Clemson early, it's special. It makes you want to commit there more. And, then you know, you realize, man, this is – super rare and they really feel highly of me. If you're a player who doesn't get an offer early from Clemson, sure, there's, there's a, you know, probably, probably a little animosity there and a little frustration with why am I getting all these big time offers from all these schools, but Clemson isn't offering. So it's, it'll be interesting to see if Clemson changes its strategy at all. Um, It's something that's worked well for them. Obviously the program right now isn't, isn't winning national titles, isn't going to win that. ACC most likely this year. Um, so it's a little different this year. And, and, you know, maybe they do change it up. But, man, it's, it's worked for them for, for plenty of years. It's hard to not the results. And I don't know if they'll change it all based on uh, a, a few guys or not. We'll, we'll just have to see what happens. I just think what's really interesting is the official visit policy, you know, wanting players to hold off on taking official visits until, uh, you know, later in the season. And I think that could potentially cost them a chance with Andre Green, who took his official to UNC um, back in October, uh, in, in the middle of October, I believe. And then also Oscar Delp and Travis Shaw, you weren't able to get them on campus for official visits. There was another player who I heard about who I won't mention his name, but uh, who had been considering Clemson. And then the lack of ability to take an official visit during the summer uh, put put the Tigers out of his recruitment. So I think that's going to be really interesting to see if they change up their official visit policy. And Matt, you brought up, you know, the offering policy that Clemson has. They decide to wait after a player has completed their sophomore season before they offer them. Some recruits, they take longer to offer than others. Andre Green, of course, received an offer in June, well after a lot of those top programs in his recruitment had offered him. One of those players that waited, that Clemson waited a little bit too long for potentially is Ernest Green. Uh, offensive lineman out of St. John Bosco in Bellflower, California. I had an opportunity to go out to St. John Bosco uh, this week. And before I get into my conversation with Ernest Green, first of all, just just very classy people at St. John Bosco. Um, you know, they treat me with a lot of respect, high quality individuals there. Uh, and, and I really appreciated my time. They, they allowed me to interview everyone that I needed to interview, take pictures, all of that. So I, I really appreciated their time. But let's get to Ernest Green. He told me that it was a little bit disappointing that Clemson waited to offer him this late in his recruitment. He got an offer, of course, back in September, and that that could have potentially affected their chances with uh, with Ernest. You know, he he talked about DJ Uyunglele being his quarterback. He kind of did the throw that Terrell Owens, that's my quarterback. You know, he did that, uh, patted his chest. You know, took a lot of pride in, in protecting for DJ and would have liked to have, have had the opportunity to do so at the next level. So. He made it seem like Clemson may have jumped in too late, but he still said that he's not ruling them out, is still considering a visit. But, I mean, Matt, he's one of the best offensive linemen in the country. He's going uh, – programs like, uh, you know, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, Texas, you know, they're going after him. Just a little bit surprised that Clemson waited this long given the connections that, that he has to them. Yeah, and, and I get that side of it for sure. The other side – of it though is you know I don't know that Clemson had a spot with him and, and wasn't sure or for him um, mm-hmm. and wasn't sure they were going to be taking another offensive lineman so and I think that's that's what's happened some I think is you know I I kind of respect Clemson for doing it the way in that we're not just going to throw out a bunch of offers that yeah. aren't committable because um, there are a lot of players that you know get offered they get offered by Alabama as a junior or Georgia or whoever it may be and then they try to commit later on and they they're told, well, actually, that offer is not really committable or they stop recruiting or whatever it may be. So Clemson wants to make sure that if they offer you, you have a chance to commit. And, and you know, it may cost them on some players, but I also think that there are some who appreciate it. So, yeah, man, it's tough. It's a tough game to play. It's getting tougher by the minute. Um, when you look at transfer portal, when you look at 
Uh, you know, the COVID year where you, you don't know if guys are coming back or not. And if they come back, you may have less scholarships available and, and trying to navigate all that. So, you know, Dabo said roster management right now is as hard as it's ever been. Mm-hmm. And I think that's fair. Um, and, you know, does that uh, cause Clemson to, to change some of his policies? We'll see. But, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely uh, I guess, a tough road to kind of navigate at this point. Yeah, I find it very interesting. Look, I'm not going to comment on it too much. I've, I've only been covering Clemson since September. You know, th- they've obviously had great results on the recruiting trail in previous years, and, and not only just previous years, but this cycle too. We have them as the number four uh, recru- uh, team in the country when it comes to recruiting, the class that they've put together. So, you know, I'm, de- I'm definitely not saying that this isn't a method that can work. I'm just saying, like, a, a lot of the players I've spoken with on these trips, you know, off the record, on the record, they have criticized – you know, the offering process, what Clemson has done. But on the flip side of it, you mentioned that some offers, if, if you just start out, start out giving the green light to every single player and then, you know, say some aren't committable and all that, that can give your program a bad reputation. And, and also, if you're, if you're looking at it from the other side of things, Clemson only has to land on, on a yearly basis 22 to 25 prospects. So, you know, you, you can be in a bad spot or, or think, so, you know, 90%, 95% of prospects in the country, top prospects in the country think negatively of you. But if you get those five to 10%, then, you know, you're fine. And you put together a really good class and this method is a try and true one. And it's one that has worked for Clemson. I just, you know, I, I heard some interesting things that, you know, the, there was one prospect I spoke with off the record who, um, you know, I'm not going to say exactly what he said, you know, or, or, you know, what his name was, but, you know, kind of highly critical of, of what Clemson's done, but, no, I'm, you know, I've also spoken to prospects who appreciate the the offer process that Clemson has. Even though Andre Green committed elsewhere, he said it made him feel really special that Clemson was uh, had only offered a few wide receivers in this class, and he was one of them. So, yeah, it's something that's very, you know, highly debated on the Tiger's Den site, on Clemson, ClemsonSports.com, on, on the Tiger's Den message board. So if you want to be able to join those kind of heated conversations, go back and forth, you know, or, or just – uh, check out some of our excellent recruiting coverage. Bas- the basketball team is looking really great. Uh, you know, the football team is still in play for, uh, for an ACC championship appearance. So why not take advantage of a, of, a, of a deal where you get a year worth of premium access only for $10 or four months for a dollar? So, yeah, we're going to keep on putting out that deal for as long as we can. You know, until it expires, we're going to keep on, on pushing that out there and encourage you all to sign up. Yeah, for sure. Lots of great stuff going on right now. You, Like you said, you went out to California and talked with several top prospects, have stories up on those guys, and including Mateo, Uyungu Ole, DJ's younger brother. Uh, lots of football stuff going on right now. My film review is up for this week, uh, looking back at the UConn game and, and kind of looking ahead to Wake Forest. So I encourage you all to sign up. Like you mentioned, $10 for an entire year. You can't beat it. Uh, come check it out, ClemsonSports.com. Check it out. And be, t- be sure to stay tuned to our YouTube page as well. Subscribe if you haven't. Follow our podcast pages. And, of course, we're going to have a game recap of the Clemson-Wake Forest game on Saturday, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Joseph Hastings. For Matt Connolly, we're signing out.